Hello and welcome to another video where today I'll be taking you through the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP formulas which can be really useful when filling out your spreadsheets. So let's now swap over to the spreadsheet and make a start. So we can see here that I've put together an example spreadsheet. So I've made all of this up, so none of it's real, but I'm just going to be using this as my example to show you how to do a VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. So we can see on here that we've got sales running down the left hand side. So these are the transaction IDs. We've got a part number. We are missing the part name. We also have the customer's country who made the order. And then we're missing some information here for the customer continent, the net, VAT and total. Now what we're going to be using is a VLOOKUP to gather some of the data. And then we will use a HLOOKUP to gather the part name net amount and VAT amount. Now we're going to start off with our VLOOKUP. So the first piece of missing information is the part name. Now we are going to skip over that because we're going to look at the HLOOKUP second. So we'll start off by using a VLOOKUP to match up the customer continent with the customer country. Now a VLOOKUP is used to populate data based upon a reference table. So it searches for a value in the first column of a range and then returns a value from a specified column in the same row. Now that might not make sense, but it certainly will do once I actually get into the example. So like I said, a VLOOKUP can be a really, really useful way, as can a HLOOKUP, although you probably will use a VLOOKUP more often, to populate data based upon a reference table. Now, if you've only got a few rows to fill out, obviously it's a little bit of a waste of time doing it, but if you've got a lot of information to fill out, such as this, so we can see we've got over 100 transactions here, then putting together a small reference table can save you a lot of time when populating the data. So let's show you how this works. So at the bottom here, I've created another tab called continent reference. And we've got all the countries that have made sales in the left hand column. And we've got the relevant continent that they relate to in column B. Now what we can do is we can use a VLOOKUP formula to search for the country and return the relevant continent relating to that country. So let me show you how this works. So in our customer continent here, we're going to start off as we would do with any other formula, which is an equal sign. We're then going to type in VLOOKUP, open bracket. Now the first part of the formula is to specify the lookup value. So this is what we're telling Excel to look for. So in this example, we're wanting to look for Nigeria because that's the first customer to order relating to our first sales transaction. So we want to select Nigeria and then we want to hit the comma key. Now what we can see is in the formula, it's now gone dark blue. So it's highlighted that we've moved on to our table array. Now our table array is where do we want to actually look for the term Nigeria. So what we want to do is we want to go and select down in our continent reference, the table that we need to look for it for. Now, something that's really, really important here is that a VLOOKUP will look for whatever you've selected, so your lookup value, in the most left-hand column of your selection. So in this example, I've selected from A1 through to B11. Now, it will look for Nigeria in the most left-hand column of my selection. So it will look within column A, from A1 down to A11. So now we've selected our table array we can comma across again and that moves us on to the column index number now the column index number is effectively once you've found whatever it is that you're searching for what column do you want excel to return the value relating to your lookup value so effectively what it will do is it will search for nigeria in this left hand column once it's found it it's basically saying, which column do you want me to go to to return the related value? Now, this is not a column letter, so it's not column A or B. It's actually the number because it is relative to the table that you've selected. So in this example, I've selected two different columns. This would be column one, where the country is, and column two would be the continent. Now, I'm wanting to return the continent, 
So I need to select column two because that's the column that I'm wanting to return the value from. We can then comma across again. And I would always recommend that you type false in this section. Now what you can do if you type true, it will look for an approximate match. So it will look for something as close as possible to Nigeria. Now we don't want that. We want to find an exact match because sometimes what Excel thinks is a similar match isn't actually that similar. So I would always recommend typing false in here. And then we can close our brackets. We can then enter and we can see that it's now returned the customer continent as Africa. Now before we copy this formula down, there is one more thing that we need to do, and that is to lock the table array. You see, the problem is if I start dragging this down, and I'll do that now to show you as an example, we can see that it starts off, however, then we get this not applicable. Now what's happened is if we click in our formula, we can see that it's moved the reference table to A10 through to B20 which is not what we want. We want it from A1 through to B11 because it's moved the cell references down. So what we need to do is lock the cell references that we don't want to move. So that would be A1 through to B11. So all we do is highlight them in the bar and then we hit F4 on the keyboard. And that will put these dollar signs around each aspect or each cell that we want to lock. We can now enter and what we can now do is drag that formula down and that will populate the entire column. So we can see how that's used and obviously would save significant time from going and having a look for each one and then typing it in. So that's an example of how a VLOOKUP works. I'll now show you how the HLOOKUP works. So whereas a VLOOKUP looks vertically down the left-hand column, a HLOOKUP searches for a value in the top row and returns a value from a specified row in the same column. So instead of now looking from the right of our selection, it will look downwards. So we're going to use this in three different ways. We've got this for the part name, we've got this for the net, and we're going to also use this for the VAT. Our total, I've already put a formula in there to add up our net and VAT amounts. What I have done is created another tab with product references on. Now what we have on here is the part number, we have the part name that we're going to be using shortly, and we also have the net related to each part and the VAT rate. Now, we'll start off by doing the part name because that was the first one that we got missing. So what we do is we start out very similar to a VLOOKUP, so equals, but this time HLOOKUP, open brackets. And the value that we're looking for is the part number, because that's what I've used as part of the product reference table. So we're looking for part number four, and then we need to specify where am I looking for that value. So comma across, and again, that takes us onto the table array. Go down to product reference, and then select the table that we're looking or wanting to return the value from. Now that we've selected that, we need to determine which row to return the value relating to the figure that we're looking for. So in this example, what it will do is it will search across this top row here for the value we're looking for. Now we've specified for this first one that we're looking for four. So what it will do, it will look across until it finds number four. Now we're wanting to return the part name. So what I can do is let me comma across again and that now highlights the row index number. So it's saying once I've found whatever it is you've told me to look for, from what row do I need to return the relevant value? So in this example, it would be row two. So what we can do is we can enter in two and then again, same as the VLOOKUP, we want to enter in false because we don't want an approximate match, we want an exact match. So enter that in and we can see that it's returned the part name. Now very similar to the VLOOKUP, we need to make sure that we lock these cells before we drag it down, otherwise it will move the table reference. So again, same process, highlight what we want to lock and then we want to hit 
F4 on your keyboard. Once we've done that, hit enter and then we can drag it down. One other tip if you want to save a little bit of time as well, you can see that there's this highlighted box right at the bottom of our cell in the bottom right hand corner. If we double click that, that will do the same thing where it auto fills up until the next available gap. So if we scroll right down, because there's no further values next to these, it will stop at that first gap. So it saves a little bit of time rather than dragging it down. But if you want to be sort of 100% clear that you've done every single cell within your table, it might be better to still drag it down. But if not, that is a little time saver. Okay, we're going to repeat this process now, but for the net amount. So again, we'll do equals HLOOKUP, open bracket, and we're still going to use the part number to reference here. So select the part number, comma across to table array, and then go back to our product reference and select the table we want to look for that value in, comma across again. And now, because we're looking for the net, rather than row two, we're going to be looking in row three. So our row index number in this example wants to be three, comma across. And again, we want to hit false. And then I think we know by now, we just want to lock these cells so that the table doesn't move as we drag the formula down. So F4 and enter. So we can now drag this down to populate the net values for each product. Now, the last one I want to show you is for the VAT. However, this does cause a little bit of a problem because we've got a new aspect here. And that is for the VAT, we need to do a multiplication of the percentage based on the net. Now, if this was 20% for everything, we wouldn't need to use a HLOOKUP here. We could literally just multiply the net value by 20%. However, if we go back to our product reference, we can see that different products have different VAT rates. So product one or part number one has 20%, but part number two has zero, part number three has five. So because of that, we could again, if we really wanted to, we could look through every single part number and multiply each one by the relevant percentage, but we can still use a HLOOKUP to help us do this. The way that this would work is slightly different. So we'd start out with equals and we want to take our net amount of 180. Now we want to multiply that by a certain percentage and we're going to use the HLOOKUP in order to return the relevant percentage. So what we would do is now that we've got our times in there, our asterisks, we would write in HLOOKUP and we're looking up the value for part four again comma across, table array, and go and select our table. Now the row number this time will be row number four because it's the fourth row within our selection. So we can type in there four, comma across, false as usual, and close bracket. Now we still need to remember here to lock our table. So select those cells for the reference table and F4 on the keyboard. Once we've got that in, we can hit enter and we can see that it returns the VAT at 20% because part number four was 20%. So let's go and just double check. So we can see part number four, the VAT rate was 20%. Now, when we drag this down or double click in the right hand corner, it'll populate the cells and we can see that it's brought in the relevant VAT rate and multiplied our net values to give us the correct amount of VAT on each part number. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to do a VLOOKUP, a HLOOKUP and a slightly more complex HLOOKUP or really I'm just showing you how to use it in a different way. Now this does take some getting used to and what I'll do is I'll provide this blank sheet without the formulas in in the comments section of this video. And I'll also give you the completed sheet so that you can give it a go yourself and then check against how it should look. But just remember the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP formulas 
are both extremely useful once you get used to them for helping you save time by populating large amounts of information. And that wraps up this video on how to use a HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP. I hope you found it useful and remember if you have, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more accounting videos. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.